when I hear those patriotic songs and I listen to our veterans, it brings tears to my eyes because this is a great land. This is a great country. Our veterans have fought hard to make sure that we have the rights and the privileges we have today. This is only the land of the free because of the brave men and the brave women that laid down their lives. And now we have people in Washington who want to take these freedoms away. They didn't give them to us. God did shed his grace on us. God gave us the right to be free. And we're not going to let them take our freedoms and our liberties. That's what we're about. And we will not get tired. We're dealing with the people, with people who are con artists. They know why they have conned us for decades. And we're here today to say no more. No more. We have had enough. No more of your cards. No more of your lies. I don't want you telling me how cold or how hot to keep my house. I don't want you to keep telling me how much water to, it should be in my toilet or what sort of lights I should have. Who in the heck do they think they are? They are not our creators. And we need to stand up, stand tall, speak out, and don't give up. But I want us to stick together. I want us not to become weary. I want us to be determined to turn this country around. And I believe within my heart that we will win. That wasn't such a great deal Friday. We know that. But it was a little something. And a little something is better to me than nothing. The two things that I love came, that came out of there is the funding for the abortions, in, abortions by federal taxpayer dollars was stopped in Washington, D.C. And also the voucher program was funded so that some of these inner city children who are really educationally, oh, disadvantaged, miseducated. I'm telling you, I deal with children. I have um, standardized books for the second and sixth grade. I give sixth graders second grade tests and they can't do them. They can't do them. So I know that they are deficient. I tell them, invest in yourself. I'm here to invest in you. Don't give up on you, and I won't give up on you. I don't get paid. I don't need to get paid. My pay is when they can read, write, and think. That's what I want. That's what I want. That's why I'm there. And thank God for the Tea Partyers. Thank God for what we've been doing. Thank God they're, be, they're noticing. And they are afraid of us. Because we come in force and we mean business. May God bless America. Continue to bless America. And each and every one of you. God bless you. God bless you. Fight on. Fight on. Fight on! Fight on! They think that it's just whites who are involved in the tea parties. But I say, well, I'm a tea party member. And so they're a little baffled. So then they'll ask me, are you a Republican? I say, no, I'm a registered Democrat. So I double baffle them. It's about principle. It's about values. It's about loving this country. It's not about party. In January of this year, I was called the N-word by a black woman. January the 11th, I put it on my calendar. First time in my life, I don't care. And was it because she found out you were a tea party? No, because I, I well, she doesn't know I'm a tea party. She would really call me something that. But because I'm trying to teach children in this setting the truth. I, th because the children have been brainwashed to think that um, um, they, white people are against them. I teach them about the Quakers. I teach how they helped during slavery. I teach those things. And that's what's upsetting to her. She wants me to teach them about Malcolm X. What did Malcolm X do to help improve the life of blacks in America? He was trying to increase a membership into the nation of Islam. 
That's right. And when he came from Mecca, he didn't say all blacks and whites could live together. Yes, he did, only under the banner of Islam, not with our Judeo-Christian foundings, under the banner of Islam. So she knew I knew those things. I told the children those things, and she got very upset with me. Call me the N-word. I don't care. I went to another meeting. Um, what was it? One of the council members. I went to one of his meetings. Destroy capitalism. Down with capitalism. They had a congressman from Brooklyn there speaking. Destroy. We don't need capitalism. This was at a councilman's meeting. This is at a representative. Yes. And see, they define themselves as socialists. They are. And then they have a list of, of progressives. That's right. They are. But I infiltrate these agencies and go to these meetings just to see where their minds are at. And it's very discouraging. That's right. Well, that's why I stay where I'm at because I'm able to talk to some people. One or two will have a change of heart. And they'll say, really, Margaret Sanger did this? She, I said, yes, let's look it up. You know, that whole Planned Parenthood, I mean, we live in Englewood and, and it's a African American community and that's where Planned Parenthood is all throughout the country. And, you go into almost any black neighborhood, and, um, and the ones I've gone into, Planned Parenthood is there. Now, do, does that resonate? The do they understand that that? No. So what could we do for people to understand that? Because it's really about eliminating, you know, it black is. children. It is. Well, only thing we can do is try to teach, educate them. Like this one gentleman, when he looked up Margaret Singer and he saw that, he says, you know what? I think I might become a Republican. So you don't know how many people you'll talk to. And then I've talked to people, you know, one-on-one, -on -one, calm it down, you know, I have to bring myself down, you know, and, and some of them are receptive. So you're absolutely right. So it's really one person at a time, right, Barbara? That's what you have to do. And you can't get weary, you can't get tired, and you can't give up. Now, some people are lost, gone. Those people I say, conversation through. But others who are open, it's worth it. That is great advice. Thank you. You're more than welcome. Thank you so much. Yes. I have always President loved politics. Long. It's been something, it's been an Unless interest to me. I love history. So this is kind of like a natural offshoot Finally, of that. So the fact the that I, I look at, I, I look at all of this stuff and I just say, I have to be able to do something about it. I have to. They As really they need to listen to where what, what our heart is telling them and our heart is to tell them stop and, and stop um, uh, spending, get control of yourself. It's the same thing I would tell federal, my, my six-year-old. Stop it. You're out of control. <laughs> no. and by the way, this is April 15th, tax day. This is the day that the liberals, the progressive liberals, think that all your money belongs to the government. Yes. In fact, that's why they call it the IRS. Spell it. T-H-E-I-R-S. Put it together, it spells theirs. <laughs> this is a letter in my hand that was in a package. This package was sent to the Internal Revenue Service in reply to their demand for 3000 $429 in taxes owed by this man. The man wrote in the package, he said, Dear Sirs, in this package, please find an article from the New York Times stating that the Pentagon paid $171.50 for a hammer and NASA Space paid $600 for a toilet seat. As to the $3,429 that you claim I owe you, in this package, please find four toilet seats and six hammers, which is payment in full. I want to leave you with the words of a Democrat, a president, Grover Cleveland, who said, though people should support the government, the government should not support the people. It makes a lot of sense because we have a socialist leaning government now that, that wants dependency. Everybody should be dependent. And once you get dependent on the government, you don't want to give it up. There were three men in a park. One had his leg in a cast. One had his arm in a cast. The third had a pair of crutches. And a man came walking by with wild hair and wild eyes. And he looked at those three men. He said, I'm a healer and I can heal you. And he put his hand on the leg cast. He said, I can heal you. The man said, it's tingling. It's perfect. I can feel again. You healed me. 
He turned to the man with the arm cast. He put his hand on the arm cast. He said, I can heal you too. The man said, it's getting warm. It's vibrating. I can feel again. You healed me. He turned to the third man with the crutches. The guy with the crutches says, don't touch me. I'm on disability. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, you've been wonderful. If there's anybody from the newspaper and you like the show, remember my name, Danny Curtis. If you didn't like the show, remember my name, Tim Adrians. And let's all chip in and get him a coat. Thank you, Danny. If you allow the doctors of New Jersey to give you one half a day a week to take care of all the Medicaid patients, all the illegal aliens, everybody that crowds our emergency room. If you let us take care of them for free, no codes, no claim forms, no bureaucrats, then all we ask the state is that you cover our liability, our malpractice for entire office. You would save the state of New Jersey two billion dollars. Why do we know that? We did studies that show where the Medicaid dollars go. And the taxpayers basically are paying for the insurance companies to administer a Medicaid system that doesn't pay the doctors, period. That's why they can't find doctors. The specifics the insurance companies receive half a billion dollars to pay the doctors, all the doctors, 90 billion, 90 million, excuse me, half a billion to pay 90 million. Who's park, park, pocketing all this money? CEOs, executives. We have a website, njaaps.org, and you can look on that and follow the um, progress of this law that is now being drafted by about six legislators. They're very interested in it. They're putting it together to give us free malpractice coverage if we provide health care for the poor for free, four hours a week. And uh, it's, a, it's an idea whose time has come. The doctors are all for it. We'll do it. And uh, we've been doing it anyway. So help support us. Go to your legislator and say, we want this Medicaid replacement idea. It'll just slowly replace Medicaid, not immediately, so people don't have to get real nervous about it. But people will find out that instead of going to an office where they got to fill in a bunch of forms to get a Medicaid card, they can go to a free clinic that's nearby and just get cared for. And volunteers will help to put these together. Um, and America will be America once again. Thank you. It's the economy. It's, uh, it's really in bad shape, the unemployment. I'm myself lost my job recently, so uh, it's personal for me. The Tea Party um, has to work with the Republicans, it seems to be, but I think they also should complain to them that they buckle under really easily. They give in on a lot of the things that we want, uh, you know, like this debt ceiling. I know they're going to cave. I was coming home from work the other day, and I came up to a road that came up to a T. So I was going to turn right, and they were turning left. And as I came up on this car, I noticed that this car had every imaginable liberal bumper sticker on it. Peace for all. Stop world hunger. Stop wars. Coexist. Obama 08. So as I came up alongside the car, it was kind of a nice day. My window was rolled down. Their window was rolled down. There was somebody in the passenger seat. And I said, so uh, how do you like that new war Obama just started? <laughs> that was the best comeback they had. <laughs> this U.S. Constitution is not just a document. It is a contract. It is a contract between the various states and the federal government. And it says that those powers, not specifically given or enumerated to the federal government, belong to the states and to the people. I'm an American. I hold to the Constitution. I hold to a representative republic. Thank you so much for being here today. Thank you. Hey.